Good morning, everyone. Good morning. How's your week? I hope everyone is okay. And we continue with our series on our study of uh, First John, you know, the letter of First John. You know, one of the basic principles of parenting, of parenting 101, is that every child has a basic need to feel assured of his parents' love. Do you agree, parents? Because Pastor grew up practically, practically without a father. My dad left us when I was seven years old. So I grew up under the care of my aunties. That's why, you know, my socks are colored green, purple, my briefs colored yellow, red, but that's okay. But also, I, you know, I was a mischievous child. I would go home sometimes with a bloodied mouth uh, into street fights because I long for my uh, father's love. So when I became a father, our children, Miko and Thea, when they were ages between four to seven, uh, when they break house rules or disobey us, depending on the severity, they will be punished. Sometimes they will be spun. But every time that we do that, we tell them the reason why. Why we have, why we got mad, or why we got angry. Because we believe really in that uh, principle that they are to be assured of their love. I remember also, you know, when I was a kid, a kid my, my uncle would arrive once in a month, and whenever he's there, he would uh, with me from behind, all on my behind. You know? So I really struggle, and, and, and really, you know, I really struggle for that love. How, how's your uh, life as a kid? Did you really feel that you're loved by your parents? You know, praise God, brothers and sisters in Christ, assurance, remember, assurance of love is essential for close relationship. And this is very true also spiritually. Even though our Heavenly Father disciplines us, it is always out of His love for us. It is always out of love for our good. He wants us as His children to be assured of His great love for us. God wants His children to really feel His arms of love around them even when they go through these difficult trials. Now, however, the enemy of our souls knows what that we will not feel close to God if we doubt our standing before Him as His beloved children. So He accuses us in an attempt to drive a wedge between Him and us. Remember Revelation chapter 12, verse 10, it reads, for the abuser of our brothers who abuses them before our God day and night. And in addition, our, all, our conscience at times condemns us you know, when we sin. And then we compare ourselves with the holy standard of God's word. And perhaps there are others of us here who are very good at accusing themselves that they live guilty ridden and shame-centered lives. No, I am talking this way because I had uh, the, the sermon last week uh, had a lot of reactions. No? Pastor, am I a Christian? Pastor, I really know I love this person. And, but whenever I see him, there is anger, there is anger, there is uh, hatred, there is bitterness in me. Am I a Christian? Pastor, I know I have to pray that God will, will bless this person, but inwardly, I pray that God will punish him. Masagasaan sana siya ng pisoy. Ano tatawa ng kayo? Bukang totoo, mukhang yun ang naisip nyo last week, ha? No? Lord, di ba? Ganun. Pastor, you know, whenever I see him, remember, uh, I, I remember what he has done. He borrowed money from me, and he will pay me on the 15th. When I approach him and uh, collect the money, sinigawan pa ako. He, he embarrassed me in front of my of our office mates. Siyempre, whenever I see him, I really want to pinch him. Christian ba ako? Christian ba ako? Now, when we have these thoughts, the enemy comes in and says, you know, a true, a true Christian can't have those thoughts. 
You are of the devil. You are in my kingdom. You are not a Christian. You see, there is a struggle. Now we are in the second uh, application of the test, the three tests of authentic Christianity. Remember the test, moral test of obedience, and then the social or relational test of loving the brethren, and then the doctrinal test of faith in the person and the work of Jesus Christ. Now during the first application of the test, after the two, the moral test and the relational test, John Paul's and gives his words of assurance that he believes his readers in their, uh, in their spiritual condition. He assures them that God loves them. Now here in the second application of the test, he again follows the same pattern. Two Sundays ago, we talked about the moral test. Last Sunday, we talked about the social test. And now, he interjects this work of assurance to all of us. And so, last Sunday we learned about how the importance of living a life of love. And we know and we have found out that one way, one of the ways that you are a born again Christian is when you are moved to love with uh, action, not just with attitude. When you see the need, you do the deed. Okay? And so this confirms that we really are of His and pours confidence into our faith. So we ended in verse 18 and now we go to verses 19 to 24 in our series on 1 John, the study of the letter of 1 John. But before we do that, let's come before God in prayer. Our loving Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, our Savior and Lord. Your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And in this passage, as we study, O oh God, this instance of uh, the address of assurance, Lord, the issue of assurance, uh, an issue which perhaps many, most, or all of us have struggled, have wrestled with uh, from one time to another. Lord, I pray that you open the eyes of our hearts, that we will understand, comprehend our lesson today. We thank you that your word is true and your word is practical. Speak to us, O oh Lord. Enable us to receive it, believe it, and live by it. Empower me. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Now on the subject of assurance, R.C. Strong points out four possibilities. First, there are those who are unsafe. And they know that they are unsafe. They don't make any claim of salvation. The second group, there are people who are saved, but do not know they are saved. They doubt their salvation, perhaps of troubled conscience. And third, there are people who are saved and know they, that they are saved. Fourth, there are those who are not saved but confidently believe they are saved. They have false assurance. San kayo sa apa? As I understand our text, John is addressing the second group. They are saved but they doubt their salvation because of their awareness of falling short of God's commandments or the three tests. Okay? So our text falls into two sections. But allow me to tell you first that the approach here is these verses, they are, they are to comfort the disturbed hearts, not to disturb the comfortable hearts. Okay? To comfort us. To comfort us. And uh, there are two important things that I would like for us to know this morning. First, when our hearts convict us, we must rest on the basis of assurance. We must rest on the basis of assurance. That is found in verses 19 to 20. John's meaning in these two verses is that a person who is troubled with doubts and self-condemnation must confront himself with the knowledge, with what he knows to be true about God's work in his life, and what is true of God's greater knowledge of his heart. And that is what we're going to discuss. Now, the word rest means to calm, to pacify, to soothe. The word can be traced back to the idea of to tranquilize. You see, it's really an amazing thought that we can come to his presence. He is holy. 
and we're not. And yet our hearts can be at rest in His presence. The word presence means to be in front of. To be in front of God. Now for the believer in Jesus Christ, Romans 8.1 says, There is now no condemnation. Now, but what do we do when doubt creeps in? When, how, how do you handle condemning thoughts? Some of us perhaps were raised in a church tradition that hammers on guilt and shame. Have you encountered a, a Christian group na they are so strict in their laws? There is a church there in Cavite na when you sin, you are paddled. And the women, they are not allowed to wear jeans. And when they wore jeans, the, the members of the church won't keep them in public if they are in the malls. You see, they are uh, taught that way. But the idea here, brothers and sisters in Christ, in verse 20, if your heart condemns, sabi don, if our heart condemns us, the idea behind a condemning heart is to find fault or to know something against someone. It has an idea to put you down. So what do we do when we are hearing a soundtrack of condemning thoughts and feelings? that loop over and over again. Where are we going to base our assurance? Now, I'm, I'm telling this because I know last week you had so many questions. How, how, pastor, if I did pass the test every time that I am, uh, I, I, I encounter that test, I really fall. Am I really a Christian? So we will answer that. And, and John gives us two points. One, it is based on the knowledge of God's work in our lives. Where are we going to base our assurance? Based on the knowledge of God's work in our lives. You see that in verses 19 to 20a. Now, the word or the phrase this is, or for this, is referring back to verses 17 and 18. And it reads, If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be that person? Dear children, let us not love with word or speech, but with actions and in truth. Now, John's point in these verses is that a self-sacrificing love is a mark of a true Christian. A self-centered hatred is a mark of the world. So, John is telling us in verse 19, when you are troubled by doubts and self-condemnation, don't focus on your failures. After all, who is a Christian here who hasn't failed? Who, who, is, who hasn't failed here? You know, every one of us has failed. But rather, focus on the victories that God has given you. Do you get that? And let, it, let this be the evidence that you are in the truth and cease doubting. So what I'm saying is it is helpful for us to examine ourselves, our failures, and learn from them. Why did I sin in that way? How can I avoid that sin in the future? You see? Okay, let me illustrate. Name 10 instances where you failed on the three tests. Moral, perhaps you were able to control your tongue. Perhaps on your addiction. Your sexual sin, perhaps your laziness to read the God, to read God's word and to pray. You list ten instances that you didn't obey God. I'm sure you will not have a hard time making the list, right? But let me ask you: name ten times, ten instances that you had victory over the three tests or the, the, the temptations to fall in the test. Example. You were able to control your tongue to slander the person who hurt you. Can you give me a list of those things that you were weren't able to gossip, to slander, that you were able to overcome your laziness and that you begin to read the Word of God. For this week, you completed the one-week uh, devotional. Can you name 10 instances that you were able to overcome your hatred of a brother or a sister? It's 
heart of. Now, if you can think of a victory over those things, those temptations, think if you are of Cain or of Christ. Did you get that? If you really can find an example, the pastor, I, no, you know, I am addicted to, to computer games, to pornography. Oh, you were now engaged. There is this temptation to, 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 take, to, to look at the site. Were you able to overcome it? Oh, that's one. Or you weren't. You just continued with that sin. Can you name several instances? Diba? When you look at the person, you know that you hate that person. But you said, I, won't, I will love this person, Lord. When? Can you name? No, that is what John is saying. You can see it when God's love flows in you. That you will have victory over these things. And then you'll be assured of your salvation. That's why you sin less and less. Because you know already, you have been evaluating yourself. You are so weak in this thing. And then, Lord, convict, as the Lord convicts you, as the Spirit convicts you, whenever you are confronted with that sin, you try to overcome that sin. And you grow in holiness. So it is based on what God is doing in your life. Your assurance is based there. Are you with me? That's why, you know, when, when pastor says, these are my sins before, I know I'm just like you guys before. These are my sins, my lustful thoughts, these things. Lord, help me to overcome this. But I have to go through a very difficult process. That I have to go through a disciplining period. I, am, I was incarcerated for several years. Until I went back to the ministry. But when I got back to the ministry, Lord, every time that it crosses my mind, I cringe before Him. Because whenever I sin, I rebel against God. And therefore, I have to grow in Him, in holiness. That's the challenge. Are you assured of your salvation? See. If God's work, is that if God is working in your life to give you victory over your sins. Not only that, our assurance is based on God's greater knowledge of us. We know that God is greater than our hearts and He knows everything. Second truth, that's the second truth, that we will know that we are assured of our salvation because of God's greater knowledge of our hearts. James Boyce says, whatever our hearts may say, God knows us better than even we ourselves do. And nevertheless, has acquitted us. Therefore, we should reassure ourselves by His judgment, which alone is trustworthy and refuse to trust our own. There are two other texts to illustrate and reinforce what John is saying here. The first one is in uh, when, when Jesus met Peter after the resurrection. Remember, Peter denied Christ three times. In John 21, verse 15, to restore him, Jesus asked Peter, when they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than this? Yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Then Jesus repeated the question in verse 16. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord. You know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. Peter had denied Jesus three times. So Jesus again asked a third time. Verse 17, the third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, Do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, Feed my sheep. In effect, what is Peter saying here? Lord, you, I know in my own heart, I do love you. But you know me better than I am. I appeal 
to your knowledge. You know me more than my heart. I appeal. You would know if I really love you. The other text is in Romans chapter 8. In verse 1, Paul affirms, Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And then in verses 31 to 35, let me read the line, verses 34, 35. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? He goes on to say, Paul is saying here, there is absolutely nothing that can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. So that's the thrust of John's text or point in our text. If you know that you are in God through faith in Jesus Christ, then even when your heart condemns you of your falling short, God is greater than your heart. He knows that he has justified you. So when you sin, you confess. Again, we go back to that. You confess of your tongue, of your laziness, of your sexual sins. You confess of your addiction. But you have to be convicted every time that you are confronted with that sin. You are to sin less and less and less and grow in holiness. Don't allow yourself to go in guilt and condemnation. The man of God has saved us, or has forgiven our sins in the past, sins of the past, the present, and the future. He saved you even though He knew every sin that you would commit after your salvation. Agree? So kahit ano yun. Pero the point here is that you want to be assured of His love, that when you are confronted with that sin, you will have everything through the power, again, through the power of the Spirit, to overcome that. That, brothers and sisters in Christ, the basis, that is the basis, knowing that God is at work in your life and knowing that God knows your heart better. He has greater knowledge of your heart. It's not about your feelings. Your feelings didn't save you. It is Christ who saved you. Right? Sometimes you say, Pastor, I, 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 I feel I'm not saved. It's, it's just the same way, you know, when was Noah saved in the ark? Yes or no? Parang di nyo Allah. Parang may susunod na question na we're going to happen. Was Noah saved in the ark? Yes. Diba? Of course, Pastor. Now, was he saved because of his feelings or because of the ark? Now, if you, the point there is if you put your trust in Christ, diba? it's not your feelings that save you. It is Christ who saved you. So, important there, your faith, your faith puts you in the ark. Be sure that you're in the ark. That's the point. And so, second, the second point, the final point, is when our hearts are confident. After no, overcoming the condemnation of your heart, you become confident. So when your hearts are confident, we will release the blessings. And there are two, two things that John is telling us. Your confidence before God grants you the blessing of answered prayer. The blessing of answered prayer. Now here. John makes a very staggering claim in verse 22. And receive from him anything we ask. Now John wasn't coming with a new doctrine of prayer here. He is just, he was just reflecting on the words of the Lord Jesus Christ said 60 years before he wrote this. 60 years there in the upper room. Jesus told the disciples, and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. I have to be honest here. I do not completely understand or experience 
this promises to answer all of my prayers. But I realize that there are certain conditions to those promises. The Bible never teaches us to, to, that we can pray for selfish wishes and it will be granted in uh, Aladdin's genie fashion. Lord, I want this, I want this, and boom, it's there. No. To pray, to pray in Jesus' name is to pray in accord to His will. And the reason that John says that we receive from Him because what? We keep His commandments and do what Jesus said. Do you think God will answer the prayer of a disobedient person? Yes or no? I'll give you an illustration. I, I gave this before. A person, a Christian philanthropist comes here and donates 20 million pesos for our lot project. Direct for our lot project and for our center. And then he asks Elder Carlo, Elder Joey, and the other Elder John and Pastor to pray for him because he is sick with cancer. Okay? Will God answer our prayers? And in the congregation of GCFNE also prayed for him. He's here in the center. A Christian philanthropist but a drug lord. The head of a drug cartel. That we don't know. But he comes here. He donated money. And then, Pastor, I am sick. Can you pray for me? And so Elder Carlo, Elder Joe, Elder John, uh, Deacon Sunny, and all our leaders come up front, raise their hands, and we started to pray. I asked you to extend your hands and pray for him. He shook and fell. He stood up. We continued our prayer. He shook and fell. He stood up. Will God answer the prayers of GCF and me for that man? Hindi kayo makasakot. Disobedient nga yun eh. Di ba? Eh, the elders prayed for him. Will, the, will God answer the prayer of that man? man? No. He shook and fell. No. The pastor prayed for him. No. Pastor Pogi prayed for him. <laughs> no. God will not answer the prayer of a disobedient man. You know, to do what is pleasing in God's sight, what is pleasing in God's sight, refers to living with a Godward focus. Seeking to please Him, beginning sa heart level. I think there's a misquotation, I'll check on 1 Thessalonians 2, I think it's not 1 Thessalonians 2, or the thought level. Okay? A God-wired focus. A God-wired focus. Now, John now sums up in the commandments in one command with two points. That we believe in the name of His Son, Jesus Christ. And there is it again. Love one another just as He, Jesus, commanded us. The verb, now listen, the verb tense of believe points to the act of faith at salvation. Okay? When, when the time that you came to know the Lord. Whereas the tense of love indicates ongoing love for one another. Listen. When we trust in Christ and walk in love, what's the promise? He will answer our prayers. But we need to understand that God doesn't answer our prayers in our way. Or in, an, or in our own timing. To teach us this school of faith, He sometimes makes us wait for Him, on Him for years. Is there anybody here who has been praying for something or someone for the past, honestly, you're praying every day for the past 10 years? Is there someone praying here? For, na hindi pa ginagrant. One, two, ano ko ko? Ayun, ayun, dumadami. 15 years. 
Ayun, ayun. 15 years. 20 years. 20 years. You, you honestly say, you've been praying for that person for the past 20 years and God, you know, hasn't granted it yet. Si Pastor, remember, my father left us when, he, when I was seven. I met him when a week before I defended my thesis. He came to know the Lord two months before he died when I shared the gospel. I prayed for him 29 years. I prayed for his salvation 29 years. But it doesn't mean, you know, God is sovereign. Sometimes he answers our prayers quickly. Sometimes it's very long. So that's the sovereignty of God. That's the doctrine of unpredictability of God. But there, brothers and sisters in Christ, to teach us that's the, the, the school of faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sometimes he makes us to wait on him for years. I remember in a, the former church, a member told me, Pastor, can you pray for my family? Okay, let's make this a covenant. We'll pray for your family morning and evening. Before the month ends, so it was at the start of the week, he came to me before our Vesper service. Pastor, this is the right time. I said, why? My family is in the farm. They are all there. My in-laws, everybody is there, 15 of them. This is our prayer. We, we, we need to go there. So the, the service, our special service starts at 6. It was about 3 o'clock. And I don't have an extra shirt. It was cloudy, nimbus. I said, okay, so what did you bring? So that we, we will ride the jeep? No, Pastor, I, bring, I brought a sa motorcycle. So, motorcycle, the last time I rode a motorcycle, I met an accident. So I was so, uh, you know, the heart, please. Remember, I met an accident. I was thrown 20 meters from the impact of collision. Imagine that one driving the motorcycle, puno siya ng fracture. Si Pastor, wala. Pero pumalo yung ulo ko dun sa pavement. And so when I look at him, my, my, uh, the driver of the motorcycle, so, Lord, wah, wah, so, but something, you know, is swelling up on my head. And then the street sweeper said, this person will die because his head hit the pavement. Ako? Ikaw nga pa, ay, iligtas mo ako, mamamatay ako. You know? So that was the last time I rode a, a motorcycle. And this time now, this guy, sabi ko, just drive slowly and we will go there. Yes, Pastor. And that's the Aguinaldo Highway. That's in Cavite. So I rode again. I'm the back rider with no helmet. So we were, you know, going. And then I said, Bro, it's gonna rain. Wala akong dalang damit. Nakaluang sleeves ako. Biglang binilisan. Ah, 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 pwede akong magbasa. Wag lang mga bobo lang binilisan. You know? But because of the threat of the rain, you know, the members of the family in the farm went back to the house. Just in time when I got there. And you know, the mother said, you know, Pastor, I'm just really wondering, why did I take a leave today? And all of them came to know the Lord in just less than a month. But sometimes God answers that way. Sometimes God asks you to wait. That's the doctrine of the unpredictability of God. You know, I, I mentioned to those who were studying the verses with me yesterday, where I struggle with these promises, I'm very candid here, okay? It's when I ask for something to God. That I know it is for His glory. And it is according to His revealed will. And then He doesn't answer. It really, you know, I, I really struggle. I really struggle. Have you prayed for, uh, have you prayed that kind of prayer? I have prayed for the salvation of people who died without having been saved. I prayed for sinning Christians, especially two sinning pastors. Until now, they haven't repented. Yeah. And my only answer to these difficulties is that I don't understand the mysteries of God's ways. So that I don't pray, always pray, according to God is sovereign. Now concerning Jesus' prayers, Martin Lloyd-Jones observes, God answered him and granted his request, and the nearer we approximate to him, in the same way we can be certain that our request will be granted. What is the principle that we can get there? So as we grow, listen, 
So, so as we grow to do the things pleasing in His sight, remember it's Godward focus. We will see more and more of our prayers answered. So when you go back and begin to read the Word of God, obey His commands. He says He will disclose more of Himself to you. He will reveal more of Himself to you. How does He do that? He will give you the desires of your heart. And because He has given you the desires of, his, of your heart, that is your prayer. And so when you pray, will God give that or not? It is God who gave that desire in you. And how do you get that? It is in reading the Word of God and obeying Him. And He will disclose more of Himself to you. That's the promise. And therefore, more of your pressure, you're like, Lord, thank you, thank you. Why? You check, you evaluate. Ah, I began to read the word of God. I, st I, started, I started obeying him. And then he discloses more of himself. So ask yourself, evaluate. Are my prayers answered? Not just the general prayers, Lord bless me, Lord, Lord, uh, uh, I'll go to, please protect me. Your specific prayer request, is he answering? How often? You get me? That's how the Lord discloses himself to you. More and more of your prayers will be answered. Because the desires of your heart, and then you give them back to Him. These are my desires, Lord. Definitely the Lord will answer. And that leads me to the last point. Confidence before God gives us the blessing. You see, what's the blessing of abiding? The abiding relationship with the Spirit. John has already spoken to us that we abide in Him, but this is the first time that God will abide in us. As in, in John chapter 15, in John 15, 10, so it's in our text, you know, the condition of this abiding relationship, what is the condition? Obedience. Obedience. Obedience to God. As we walk in obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ, we enjoy close fellowship with Him and He with us. And then His life flows through us, producing fruits that please Him. You see, that's why I'm telling you, as you are convicted, no, as you let the Word of God confront your sin regularly, you begin to know Him more. And then He puts the desire there in your heart so that when you pray, it is His desire. And that's why He answers you. But listen, abiding in Christ it's a lifelong relationship. My, pa, my, my professor would always say, you're in it there, boy, for the long haul. Just as marriage is a lifelong relationship where both part, where the partners should grow closer to one another over the years. So also our relationship with Christ. But Everyone here who is married for a long time know that growing closer to each other is not optimal. It requires purposely spending time together. That's why Neng and I would have our coffee day once, once a week. If pastor has money, Starbucks. No money, 7-Eleven. But you see, pastor doesn't drink coffee. So there was a time, honestly, there was a time I invited her to Island Cove to have coffee. The cost of coffee is 60 pesos. 60 pesos. And since pastor doesn't drink coffee, I just suddenly had water. We stayed there for four hours with the aircon and the good, the good view. Imagine 60 pesos for the day. And we talk about, we talk a lot of things about issues. So sometimes if we don't go through these issues, it will really... Uh, it's easy to drift apart, diba? And you know what Neng told me when we were going home? This is the best thing that we ever had. <gasps> the best thing? 60 pence? <laughs> or even a huge. Also, in our relationship with Christ, it takes time. 
It takes time. You have to spend time with Him. That's why we are always encouraging you to read, read, read the Word of God. Study, ponder, obey His Word. Obey His Word. Now, there are times, honestly, you feel that you are so close to God. And there are times you are so distant from God. Diba? Bakit? You are so distant because of sin. You are so close because you are trying, trying every day to, to commune with Him and then try to overcome the temptations that have been set in you. You know, it can't be autopilot. It can't be even in marriage, even, you know, your relationship with God. He says, if you remain in me and my words remain in you. Diba? The same promise it. Us. Diba ba? But how, what is the primary way that God reveals to us? It's not through vision. It's not through dreams. But I believe in that. I mean, well, if God really, He is omnipotent, He can do that. But what is the primary way of Him revealing Himself? It is through the written word. So if you're not reading the word of God, how can He reveal Himself to you? How can you keep His commandments? How can you grow in holiness? How can you then have the desires that He places in your heart? You can. That's why your answers are not, your prayers are not being answered. The only way He reveals Himself through the Word. Through the Word. To grow closer to Jesus Christ, therefore, read your Bible over and over until you are at home with Him. Hindi po kami magsasawa. Wala namang Amerikano. Hindi po kami mag magsasawa to remind you. Read and read and read the Word of God. Spend time. Spend time. That's how God also changed me. Spending time with Him until it came to a point whenever lustful thoughts Whenever these things bother me, I cry before Him. I cry before Him. And John adds in the last part of verse 24 that we know that He abides in us because of the Spirit that He gave us. There is that Spirit that you can do these things, that you can overcome. Loving, if you have a hard time loving a brother or a sister because of what he has done to you, you can overcome because of the power of the Holy Spirit. You can overcome your sexual sins because of the power of the Holy Spirit. You can overcome your tongue because of the power of the Holy Spirit. You can overcome your laziness to read and study the Word of God and pray because of the Holy Spirit. And now if the Holy Spirit abides in you, brothers, and sisters in Christ. If it abides in everyone who is here, grave what GCF and me would be. Can you look at the person beside you? Grabe ba talaga? Park. The presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives is manifested actually in our conduct. In our life. John Stott says, so if we would assure our hearts when they accuse and condemn us, we must look for evidence of the Spirit's working and particularly whether He is enabling us to believe in Christ, to obey God's commandments and to love the brethren. For the condition of abiding is this comprehensive obedience and the evidence of ab abiding is the gift of the Spirit. You see, these are the two points. He goes back. He goes back. John comes full back, full circle, to knowledge as the basis of your assurance. And then when you have that knowledge, it gives you the confidence. And then, I think prayers will be answered because the Holy Spirit indwells in you. And you grow and grow and grow. But the first anchor of our assurance is always faith in the person and word of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you trust in Christ, what is, what is His promise in John 3.16? Eternal life. What is His promise in John chapter 10? No one can snatch, snatch you out of His hand. 
No one. The problem here is this. Now these Gnostic teachers were claiming that they have secret knowledge, that they have special knowledge. Brothers and sisters in Christ, remember our study. You go back. You go back to the very beginning. Never, never be influenced by them. Go back. Go back to the person, the work of Jesus Christ. Go back to the gospel. And so he gives us the test. Do you love God's word and obey them? Do you love your brethren, brothers and sisters in Christ? Do you believe in the name of God's son, Jesus Christ? And also his sacrificial death on the cross. You may say, Pastor, yes, but I, honestly, I don't do these things perfectly. I often fall short. Now, it is to you that this text, verses 19 to 24, that John has written, it is to you, and he wants to assure you, but he wants to ask you, do you see evidence of God's working in your life through loving others? Well, you struggle, but because of the Spirit, there is that move that you show victory in that. Do you see answers to your prayers? Not general prayers. Specific prayers. Do you see answers to your specific prayers? Do you enjoy fellowship with Christ as you live to please Him? If so, know that God is greater than your heart. He wants you, you, you and me to be confident in His love. He wants to assure you that you are His child. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, for your great love for us. Thank you, God, for assuring us of this love that nobody, nobody can snatch us out of your hand. But Lord, would you just move in our midst. Perhaps we really struggle in those three tests. There are certain things that we struggle about these sins. Can we really say that you are moving, your love is moving, flowing to us, that we can love our brother and brother or sister in spite of what they've done? Lord, can we really see answers to our prayers, specific answers to prayers? Would you please move in our midst? As we continue our study, Lord, help us to really learn from you, from your word. And please, Lord, help us to develop the habit, the discipline of reading your word, of studying your word, of loving your word, of obeying your word. Thank you. This is our prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.